I would like to give each and every one of you a warm welcome. A welcome to those of you who are returning after our last series, several of you are. Also a special welcome to anyone who is new. A welcome to those who are here on the live video or the live Zoom class, as well as those of you who will be practicing with the videos. I am delighted to be offering this practice and sharing it with you today and for these next, next five weeks. I want to begin with a reminder, and this is going to be a reminder that those of you who have practiced with me before have heard, but I think you can't hear it too many times. And that reminder is that each one of us is a unique and beautiful embodiment of strengths and abilities, as well as challenges in our amazing bodies. So not everything that I offer in each, in any given class is going to be appropriate for you. So the part of the practice is learning to listen inwardly. It's not a practice of Simon says, do this, Simon says, do that. I'm going to suggest some movement inquiry for you. And your practice is to really listen to your intuition and honor your own limits and honor the places where it feels joyful in your body and where it doesn't. And I'll try to offer some modifications, but it's really a practice of inward listening. Um, some of us may be new to yoga. Many of you aren't. Many of you have practiced for many years, but perhaps some of you have been away from the yoga practice and after a long hiatus, some of you have injuries that you're working with, maybe recovering from surgeries or other limiting factors. So today, I invite you to celebrate the body that you have just as it is. Not the body that you had 10 years ago, not the body that you wish you had, not the body that someone else has, Part of the yoga practice is to honor what is here now and let that, let the practice be inquiry, inquiry as to what's alive in you, an exploration of what's alive in you right here in this moment in the here and now, in this body that you're inhabiting right now. And let the practice be in the spirit of celebration of that. Celebrate being alive. So with that, I would like to invite you to come into your yogic seat. And as a reminder, some of you have not practiced with me before. So I'll just start with a few basic reminders here that you want to have a chair with a flat seat if you, if you can and no arms. And if you have a blanket, some of you might find it useful to have a folded blanket I'll move back just a little bit, a folded blanket underneath your feet if you have short legs like mine, because you want to have the knees about in line with the hips. If you have long legs and your knees are up high, then you might want to take your blanket actually and put it on the chair to raise your hips. So you want to try to get it as close to possible knees about in line with your hip flexors. So see if you can get that uh, comfortable alignment in your body. And sometimes it's just nice to have the blanket underneath your feet just for comfort and softness. You want to, when we practice chair yoga, to be sitting at the very front edge, just check something here, the very front edge of your seat so that your sit bones, it's almost like you're gonna slide off the front of the chair so that we're not tempted to lean against the back of the chair. When you lean against the back of the chair, um, it encourages the spine to kind of relax and round. And what you want is to invite length in the spine. That's the first important yoga posture, the yoga asana, that original meaning of the word asana means seat. So the alignment in your yoga seat is to have your shoulders over your hips and your spine long and lifted. So those sit bones are right at the front edge of your chair and your thighs are extending out from your chair, knees in line with your hips, toes pointed straight ahead. And take a moment here just to close your eyes and just feel your sitting bones 
rooting into the chair. And you may even want to take the flesh of the buttocks and uh, just lift it and remove it, sort of move it out to the side. At Corpalo, they used to say, remove your magnificence when people did this. So you really feel those sitting bones anchoring down. And with the power of your visualization, lengthen the tip of your tailbone down through the chair into the earth, as if you're sending a taproot down to connect with the support of the earth beneath you and all that nourishes you and supports you. And then extending up through the spine, invite a cord of energy to lift up through the channel of your spine, all the way up through the crown of the head to the sky. And when you do that, Notice if you're lifting your chin and you want to correct for that by bringing the chin level so the back of the neck is long. So you might even need to tuck the chin slightly in and under, not too much, but just enough so you, you feel the lengthening through your whole spine, which includes the back of your neck. And the lifting up is right through the very top of the head, as if that energy can expand through the crown of your head all the way up to the vast expanse of the sky. So in this way, you are connecting with the energy of the earth, supporting you and grounding you, at the same time connecting with that which is vast and expansive and infinite, which is also who you are. Let the shoulders roll back and down and let the wingtips of the shoulder blades, the scapulae uh, along the upper back, so right here, these flat bones here to draw toward one another just a little bit, which will open the heart center. So you feel that flowering open of the heart. And let the shoulders roll back and down, spread the heart, and see if you can expand the space from the tip of your tailbone to the crown of your head. And connecting with that earth and connecting with the sky Feel those energies of heaven and earth meeting right in the center of your chest at your heart center. And from here, lift the, take a deep breath in and lift the shoulders up toward the ears. Sip in as much breath as you can. Hold, hold, hold. We're doing a deep shrug here. And then with that exhale, make a little noise, a letting go sound. <sighs> and just feel any tension in the neck and shoulders and drain out of you, down and out the arms. We'll do that again, lift up. And once you feel full, see if you can sip in a little bit more breath. Shrug, 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 get tight. This time, clench the fists and scrunch up the face. Tight, 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 hold, hold, hold. We're gonna invite that tightness in. And then when we let go, we can really enjoy that flood of energy of release. Exhale, make a little noise, let go. One more time, deep breath in, lift the shoulders, crunch up the face, get the fist tight, get the arms tight, get the belly tight, even tighten your butt. Nobody can see. Just <laughs> tight, tight, tight. Tighten the thighs, curl the toes, get everything in your body tight, 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 tight. And then with that exhale, we'll invite a release <sighs> and feel that flood of life force, prana which is what our practice is really about inviting in that essential life force. And just notice the difference, what you feel in your body. See if you can allow the muscles around the face, the temples, the brow, the jaw to soften. And then syncing up body and breath and movement and attention, let the arms reach and rise, reach out to the horizon, spiral the arms open in that gesture of opening up, palms come together, overhead, exhale, gathering in. And thumbs meet right in the center of the chest. And we'll do a few, a few more of those just to, to sync up movement and breath and awareness, opening up and gathering in and let the breath be slow and deep. We're gonna breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. 
And at the top of the breath, the hands come together and a long, slow exhale to bring them down to the heart. So what we're doing here is taking that gesture of opening up to possibility and potential and the blessings of this day and exhale, gathering a sense of focus, commitment to your practice and uh, mindfulness. So what are you opening up to today as you roll the shoulders back and down? Feel it really spreading through the heart center and gathering in as the hands come together, gathering in focus, attention, and intention. Take the whole inhale to let the hands meet overhead, the whole exhale to draw them down to the heart, opening up and gathering in. And on the next one, see if you can invite in an intention, a quality that you would like to cultivate in your practice today and bring beyond your practice into your day, maybe presence, mindfulness, joy, ease, awareness, whatever it is, gather it in right to the heart center. And take a moment to visualize that intention alive in you. Maybe it's a personal prayer, offering or affirmation. And taking a deep breath in, those who wish to can join me in the sound of Om to seal that intention. Om is the expression of wholeness and the um, completion of everything in the universe. So taking a deep breath in, let's join our voices in the sound of Om. Om. Notice how you feel. Let your eyes open with a soft gaze. We'll begin with the six movements of the spine. If there's nothing else you do in your yoga practice every day, just these six movements will bring so much aliveness and uh, life force into your body, into your physical body and subtle energy body. So bring the hands onto the knees just gently. Uh, the front of the knees. And we're gonna draw the hip pointers forward, tilt the tailbone back, so arch the back. So you're coming to the front edge of your sit bones and drawing the shoulders back. Look up if you can to open to the, the throat center. Exhale, chin to chest, rock to the back end of your sitting bones, rounding the spine, drawing the shoulders forward. Let the, the navel draw in toward the back. Inhale, rock forward, arch back. So we're taking what's known as cat-cow spinal waves, undulations of flexion and extension of the spine, and we're syncing it up with breath. So inhaling as the shoulders draw back, heart spreads, front body expands, you come forward on your sit bones, exhale, you rock to the back end of your sit bones, and let the center of your back reach to the back of your chair, shoulders pull forward. And a few more of those syncing up with breath in and out through the nose. Those of you who've been practicing with me for a while and know your ujjayi breath with that gentle narrowing of the airway in the back of the throat can make that sound. So you hear the whisper sound of the breath. If you're not familiar with ujjayi breath, just take deep breaths in and out through the nose. So you want to have your sitting bones like the blades of a rocking chair, rocking forward and back arching back and arching forward, finding your full range of motion and syncing it up with breath. There's two essential movements of the spine. One more round. Opening the heart on the inhale, exhaling, folding forward, squeezing out all the breath, and then just come back to neutral spine. Once again, roll the shoulders back and down, turn the palms up on the lap and just notice what's alive in you. Just from those two essential movements of the spine and deep breathing. And we're going to take side bends, the other two essential movements of the spine. You might want to take one hand, and I'll mirror you. I'll be your mirror here. So you want to take your right hand and gently support yourself by grasping the side of the chair. Let the left hand 
rise. Reach up and extend and grow long and open. Let your rib cage smile open. And notice if you're scrunching your shoulder up to your ear and see if you can unscrunch a little bit. So drop the shoulder down, even as you're lengthening up fingertips to the sky. I'm going to move this back a little bit so you can see the tips of my fingers there. So we're gonna flow with breath, inhaling, reaching up through those fingertips and exhaling, keeping both sitting bones rooted down, reach to the side, reach long and away. So you're taking that side bend and opening through the side of the torso, letting the ribs smile open. See if you can bring that upper arm straight rather than bending. Your lower arm can bend as you arch a little deeper. Inhale up to center, exhale, float that left arm down. Notice the difference between your right and left side now. If you notice any tingling and sensation and aliveness, that is prana. That is what we're opening up to, essential life force. Other side, right arm reaches up, unscrunch the shoulder, lengthen up, see if you can lift the lower ribs away from the hips so you have nice uh, length through the whole torso. Exhale, side bend, you're just going to support yourself on your chair, clasping your chair gently with your other hand, reach long and away. You want the upper arm to be in line with the ear rather than letting that upper arm fold forward if you can. Doesn't matter how deep you go into the side bend, find your own range of motion. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, floating that arm down and feel that flood of prana. Now we're going to flow side to side with breath, remembering that this isn't Simon Says. You don't need to go exactly at the same pace as me. Let your breath be the leader of the dance and determine the pace. So inhale, one arm up, exhale, side bend, keeping both buttocks firmly planted on the chair. Inhale, lift up, exhale, float down. Inhale, lift up, exhale, side bend. Inhale up, exhale, float down. At your own pace, flowing with breath. So we expand on the inhale, we deepen into the side bend on the exhale. Once again, expanding, exhaling, releasing. Sinking up movement, awareness, and breath. And notice how after you do this a few times, you might notice that you have a little more range of motion, a little more freedom in that side bend. And we'll take one more time each side. Again, you're not following me, you're following your own rhythm of breath. Letting it be a graceful dance of awareness, movement and breath. Beautiful. Coming back to center. Notice what's alive in you. And we'll take a moment here to roll the shoulders. Finding your own range of motion, lifting on the inhale, releasing on the exhale. And here I want to invite you to let this be a letting go cleansing breath. So Make a little noise on that exhale. When we practice yoga, we use the movement of the body to be a portal in to the more subtle realms of being. So we use the physical movement to invite us into the emotional and mental realm and the spiritual realm. So using this movement of letting something roll off your shoulders, see if there's anything in the mind or heart that you can offer out, any burden that you've been carrying in your life that you can use this exhale to just oh, offer out and let go. And try rolling forward, letting that same movement, that same gesture of oh, offering out and letting go, make a little noise with your breath. What is it that you can offer out, release, turn it over to spirit? Ha. Ha. And then come into stillness, turn the palms up on the lap, and just notice if anything's been freed up. You might notice all that delicious 
tingling, pulsing, and warmth of life energy, of prana. And once again, refresh your posture, lengthen through your spine, including the back of your neck, stack your shoulders over your hips. And here I'm going to invite you to come into the yoga mudra pose. Behind your back, you're going to clasp your hands like this. I'm going to turn sideways just so that you can see the movement. And ideally, we want to straighten the arms and squeeze the shoulder blades toward the center of the back. And you'll notice how that creates a lovely opening in the heart. Now, some of us have tight shoulders, and you might notice that your arms don't want to straighten. If that's the case, then that's a good sign that you need to use your strap, maybe even just taking a couple of inches of strap. You don't want it too wide. You want it just wide enough so that you can straighten your arms and get a little bit more range of motion as you lift the hands. So you need to be make sure that you're forward on your chair so you have room to clasp your hands and lift. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Let that heart blossom open. Some of you have heard me many times quote my favorite Rumi poem, the great Sufi poet Rumi, who said, open up the window in the center of your chest and let the spirits fly in and out. So in and out through the nose, you can let that window open. And we carry so much tension in the chest and so much uh, tendency to have the shoulders roll forward and down, especially if you work at a computer or at a desk. So let this movement be a, a way of bringing a complement to that forward movement to, to open and expand through the chest. And also that sense of the physical body opening into the emotional realm. What is it that you're armoring around your heart that you can just for now soften and open? And if it feels good, you can fold the torso over the thighs. This is optional. And lift the hands to the sky and just let the head hang down if that feels comfortable. It's just a way to deepen that. Lifting your hands up to the sky, squeeze shoulder blades toward the center. Let the head hang down, maybe finding some movement of the head, finding what you're saying yes to today, find your yes, what you're letting go of saying no. When you're ready to release the arms, you can just let them hang down by your side. Oh, let everything go. And if folding all the way over the legs is uncomfortable for you, you can take a block and support yourself on your block if, you fall, if you're folding forward. And to come back up, press the hands into the thighs. Keep the chin tucked as you roll up, slowly stacking one vertebra on top of another to come to seated upright, roll the shoulders down and back and just notice what you feel. As I said in the beginning of practice, yoga is not about Simon Says, it's about inquiry. So take this as a moment of inquiring what has shifted for you in your yoga practice so far this morning? Do you feel more alive? So the other two movements of the spine are twists, right and left. So once again, refreshing your posture, even on your sitting bones, long through your spine, and I invite you to let the arms reach and rise on the inhale. On the exhale, twist to your right and bring your left hand to the outside of your right thigh. Your right hand can come to the back of the chair or to the bottom, the seat of the chair behind you. You, know, you want to invite the heart to turn toward the right and look over your right shoulder. Exhale. So we're going to sync this up with breath. Inhale, lifting up, unwinding your twist at the top of your breath. Your hands reach to the sky, facing center. Exhale, take the whole exhale to come into your twist on the other side. And that leverage on the outside of your thigh, this time you're, you're raising to your left, is going to help you deepen the twist. Soften your shoulders. Notice if you're going into scrunchasana and uh, drop the shoulders away from the ears. Lead with your heart, which I think is good advice for life. Inhale, lift up, center. Exhale, other side. So again, we're flowing with breath. Not Simon says, you lead the dance with the pace of your own breath. Inhaling up to center, exhaling into the twist. 
flow side to side. The six sacred movements of the spine, forward and back bends, side bend right, side bend left, and twist right, twist left. Next time you come to the right, to your right, hold here for a couple of breaths. And I'm gonna invite you to find a pulse in your movement so that you're gonna back off a little bit from the depth of the twist on the inhale. And on that inhale, invite lift all the way from root to crown, from your tailbone through the crown of your head. Invite that lift and length. And on the exhale, give it the juice which means you're going to find your edge of this twist. How deep can you go to the place where you feel like it's strong for you? You feel like something's happening, but you're not going to the point of any pain. Look over your shoulder, lead with the heart. And back off on the inhale and just find length. Deepen on the exhale. So it's a very subtle pulse here. Inhaling, softening to invite length and space. Exhale to invite a little depth into the twist. And you might notice that the depth of your twist will change with every round of this inhale, exhale pulse. Maybe it's just a millimeter that is going to change. But the edge, your edge, your place where you feel like you meet a wall in a posture is not a static thing. It's something that's malleable, that changes with breath, and mindful inquiry. On the next inhale, let the arms float to the sky. Big breath in and take that twist on the other side, finding that pulse. Backing off on the inhale just a little bit to invite that lift and open heart. So openness and space. Exhale, leading with the heart into the twist. Dance, just sort of like a, a dance with your edge. Inhale, backing off and lengthening. Exhaling, meeting your edge with loving awareness. Celebrating the body that you have today, right here and now. And you may notice that one side of your body is more open into a twist than the other side. That's just something to notice not anything to judge. Most of us are not symmetrical in our bodies. And when you're ready to release, inhaling, letting the arms float up as you unwind from the twist, bring the hands together, back to the heart in that remembrance of whatever that intention you want you set at the beginning of our practice is, just bring it back into your awareness. And then bring your hands to your thighs. You can let your feet come just a little bit wider apart and we'll take some torso circles, stirring the pot a little bit. You can start with small circles, just shifting your weight from one buttock to the next, to the other, <laughs> to the next right to left, letting your shoulders make bigger and bigger circles, and then see if you can play with the uh, ever widening circles, like you're spiraling open, <sighs> letting your whole torso make a big spiral motion, opening and opening and opening, <sighs> wider and wider. And notice the wider the circles go, the more you have to engage your core for support. <sighs> and try circling the other way. Making sure that you invite lots of breath here, deep breath in and out through the nose into this circling motion. I just lost my uh, 
Uh, keep going with those circles. I just lost my uh, uh, light to plug it in here. I'll see if it comes back on. There we go. I had it unplugged. It was on batteries. Okay, coming back to center. Just notice how you feel. Feel any tingling and sensation that you've invited in. And then from here, I'm going to invite you to widen the feet as wide as they can possibly go. We're going to come into the goddess pose. So again, you're sitting with your sit bones planted at the front edge of your chair. Your toes are turned out about 45 degrees. And now we get to practice and explore a stretch in the inner thigh and a deep hip opener. So you're going to use the muscles in your thighs to invite an opening of the hips and a stretch in the inner thighs. So let the outside edge of your knees and thighs draw to the space back behind you. Keep your shoulders planted over your hips, keep a nice lifted spine, and we'll come into goddess arms. The elbows line up with the shoulders and draw them back just a little bit so you keep with that nice wide open heart. Fingers active and alive, open, palms open. You can shine them toward me or you can have the palms facing one another and active fingers as if light is coming out of your fingers. You are the powerful Shakti goddess. In yoga, the name of the goddess is Shakti. And Shakti has many forms. She's the goddess of abundance, Lakshmi, or the goddess of creativity, um, Saraswati, or the fierce goddess that clears away obstacles from our life, Kali and Durga. There's also in the Buddhist tradition, the goddess of compassion, Tara. So see what kind of goddess you would like to invite in, what kind of energy, the goddess has so many names and forms. See what kind of goddess energy you want to invite in right now as you come into this goddess pose. Mm. Keep long through the spine. Goddess is connected to heaven and earth, so keep rooting that tailbone down and that crown lifting to the sky. And then we're going to take it into a flow, opening up through the heart center, reaching fingers out to the ends of the universe. There's a word, Jagatambe, which means mother of the universe. Goddess embracing the whole universe. And then cross the arms and let the goddess embrace you, chin to chest. So we're going to round the spine a little bit. So we're going to take a little rolling shoulders forward, chin to chest. See if you can walk your fingertips toward one another along the back or just grab your shoulders if you can. Exhale. Inhale, opening up, goddess embracing the world. Exhale, cross the arms the other way now, other arm underneath and exhale and fold with the upper back. And we'll flow with breath a few times here. Goddess, Jagatambe, mother of the universe, embracing the whole universe, all of creation. Exhale, she also embraces you because you're part of that creation. Flowing with breath at your own pace. Switching arms, switching which one is underneath. Embracing the universe. Jagatambe, mother goddess, embraces you. Two more. Big breath. Let the breath be really big and deep. Complete in breaths and complete out breaths in and out to the nose. And then come back into your goddess arms, elbows bent, wide open, radiant heart, knees drawing back behind you. And then bring the hands to your thighs. And we're going to straighten one arm, press into the left thigh so that the right arm straightens and the left shoulder comes forward. The, uh, the left arm straightens. I'm mirroring you here. I get confused sometimes. The left arm straightens and the right arm stays bent. And drop that, lengthen out through your spine and twist a little bit toward your right, letting left shoulder drop down and rolling the right shoulder open as you're going to press into your inner thigh on the left side. See if you can look up overhead. So another twist here, drop shoulder twist. And then back up to center 
and take it to the other side. You're gonna straighten the right arm, press into the thigh and draw that right shoulder down. Roll the left shoulder open, look up. So it's a gentle twist or a deep twist, depending on how deeply you can let that shoulder drop down, look up at the sky and release. All right, shake out the shoulders, shake out the arms, bounce the legs back together, give it a little letting go, releasing movement, any wiggles and waggles that feel good here. And now gently grasping the side of the chair, I'm gonna invite you to root down through both sit bones and lift your right leg so that you can extend it long in front of you. Maybe you can lift it hip height or even at a diagonal is fine. You're gonna keep it lifted and invite you to point and flex. We're gonna to begin to bring our practice down into the lower body now using the legs. So point and flex your foot. Now notice how when you do this, you can feel the belly, the core muscles firing up to support you here. Notice if you're gripping and clenching and see if you can soften there, just gently holding for support without clenching, keep the shoulders soft, point and flex and circle the ankles. So here we're beginning to wake up the calf muscle. We're gonna wake up the thighs. You can feel the quadriceps front of the thighs activate here. Circle one way with the ankles, circle the other way. So we're engaging the ankles, the calf muscle, the bottom of the foot, thighs active. And again, without it being Simon says do this, let it be the spirit of inquiry. Just see if you can celebrate and enjoy all these different ways that your body can move. And slowly lowering down that leg. Just notice the difference between one side and the other when you bring activity and energy. Feel how it invites in that prana, wakes, wakes up that part of your body. And we'll try it on the other side, extending out. Feel the core muscles supporting you. Feel your quadriceps, the front of your thighs activating. And say hello to your calf muscle, also known as the gastrocnemius. Point and flex. Notice if you're going into any kind of slouch asana here and see if you can stay long in the spine. That will that will activate your core and strengthen those muscles. Find circles one way, breathe into it, send loving energy there in that spirit of celebration. Celebrating the body that you have today, just as it is. And release, give your thighs a little pat down, rub down. And I'm going to invite, if you are willing and able to stand, to come to stand behind your chair. I'm going to turn my chair sideways just so that you can see, but you can just come to the back end of your chair. And stand with your feet pointing straight ahead toward the front of your chair. And you're going to place the hands just on the back of the chair, just for steadiness. And coming into your mountain pose, roll the shoulders down and back. Same thing we did when we were seating, heart seated, heart open, shoulders stacked over hips. And root the tailbone down. So it might take a little tuck of the tailbone so that you're tucking your tailbone under and forward just slightly so you feel that lengthening in the lumbar area. So the pubic bone is gonna draw forward just slightly so you come into a neutral pelvis. I'm gonna invite you to come into the posture known as downward facing dog. There's a couple of different ways to do this. Some of you who've been practicing with me for a while may wanna do it on the seat of the chair. I'll demonstrate first holding the back of the chair. So from your mountain pose, walk the feet back until the and the arms are in one long horizontal line. Keep your feet about hip width apart, toes pointed straight ahead. And walk the feet back far enough so that your legs, I don't think you have a good view here, um, so that your legs are straight, uh, going straight up and down. 
your hips over your ankles, but long enough so that you can feel that lengthening through the whole torso. We're not gripping the chair, we're just gently letting the palms rest on the chair and allowing the heart to melt down a little bit. So you get a stretch in the upper arms and the upper back. The upper arms are gonna stay in line with your ears. You're gonna reach the tailbone back, let the heart melt down. If this is very tight on your hamstrings, you can have a slight bend in the knees so you can unlock the knees a little bit. At the same time, you wanna support this lengthening of the spine by lifting the navel in and up. Downward facing dog. Reaching tailbone and sitting bones back, letting heart melt down, letting arms lengthen, finding that stretch to the shoulders and upper back. One more breath here, big breath in, exhale, heart melts down. And then slowly bend the knees, press into the chair just slightly to bring yourself back to standing and shake out the arms. Feel that aliveness. It's a great lengthening stretch for the whole spine and upper back and shoulders and for the backs of the legs. Those of you who are comfortable with doing downward dog with your palms on the chair, so you have a little bit more of a diagonal line through the, the uh, back body, the back of the torso can do that if that's comfortable. So you can take downward dog that way if you'd like. Let's take one more down dog any way that's comfortable for you on the seat of the chair facing, standing on the other side or standing on the back of the chair, walking back and let everything go. Meaning let it, let the heart go, release toward the earth and spread your sit bones a little bit wider apart from one another. Kind of like the image here is like you're fanning your peacock feathers. You're a peacock spreading his feathers. Draw the navel in and up to support the lengthening of the spine. One more breath here. And then slowly walk your feet back to standing behind the chair, roll the shoulders down and back. And we invite you to come to stand behind your chair. If you were on the other side, we're gonna take it into the warrior one pose. So about a leg length, I'm gonna invite you to step. Let's start, I'm gonna start with my left foot. You can start with your left if you'd like. About a leg length back and turn your left toes out about 45 degrees. Move this back so you can see a little bit better. So the foot is flat. Your left toes are turned out at an angle, about a 45 degree angle, and you wanna square your hips to the front. Your front knee is going to come right behind the chair bent knee. Um, if you can get longer in your stance, you can bring that front thigh a little closer to parallel. If you need a shorter stance, it's okay to have it at a, an angle, but your foot is going to be just under the chair, pointing straight ahead, your shoulders square, stacked over your hips. And you wanna to try to get those two hip pointers, those two, what we call the as-is bones, A-S-I-S points, pointed, bones pointed straight ahead. Because in a warrior pose, it's about cultivating that energy of facing your challenges head on. If your right knee is bent, let the left arm rise to the sky, holding on to the chair with one hand. If you need to hold on to the chair with both hands, you can do that. If it's available, left hand to the sky, soften the shoulder down away from the ear. So you're inviting that whole stretch through the back leg, through the front of the hip flexor, up the side body, up to the fingertips. If it's available to you, you can let both hands reach to the sky. Inviting in that warrior, powerful warrior energy. Fingertips reach to the sky and that spirit of celebration. Or maybe if it's available, you can take that yoga mudra, clasping hands behind you, letting the heart, oh, call this one a courageous warrior. Keep rooting the tailbone down and the crown lifted to the sky. So as warrior, you are the bridge between heaven and earth. And releasing the hands, once again, bringing them to the chair. 
and step the back foot up to meet the front. Feel the difference between one side and the other. This is a really nice stretch for the psoas area on the, on the back leg. The front leg, you're gonna nice strengthening in that thigh. Let's step the other foot back, about a leg length. So you're gonna keep it hip width apart as you step back and then turn the toes out 45 degrees. Then square your hips. There's gonna be a little dynamic tension here as you draw the right hip crease forward now. You're gonna feel that stretch and that hip flexor and root down through the outer edge of your right foot, plant it firmly into the mat. Notice if your back knee is bending and you wanna see if, if you can straighten it, drawing the outside edge of the knee, the, or rather the back edge, the back crease of the knee to press away from you. Square your hips to the front, open your heart. Either both hands on the chair, you can move forward enough so that your knee is just right behind the seat of the chair. Tuck your tail, lengthen through your spine. And this time, right arm rises to the sky. Feeling your upper, your arm extended like the sword of a warrior channeling down energy from the heavens. If it's available, both hands reach to the sky. And softening the shoulders. So if you need to have your arms a little wider, you can do that. I call that celebrative warrior. Breathing deeply in and out through the nose. If you wanna take your open-hearted warrior, courageous warrior, squeeze the shoulder blades toward the spine. Big breath in. Maybe you wanna take goddess warrior, letting your arms come into those goddess arms, Shakti warrior. Then the hands come to the chair and step back into mountain pose and just notice what's alive in you. Beautiful, powerful warriors, everyone. Come to the side of your chair. You can come to the right side of your chair, standing in that mountain pose with one hand, just gently grasping the chair. So you wanna be close enough so that you're not having to reach so that you can stand in a steady and comfortable mountain pose. I'm gonna come into the tree pose, which you can do either by bringing your foot, if you can use the other hand to help, foot inside the thigh of the standing leg or the calf or bringing your tippy toes on the right foot to the floor or to a block. Well, some people like to have, their leg, to have their leg raised a little bit. You can bring your foot to your block. Your knee wants to point straight out to the side, the bent knee, so that it's a hip opener. So again, we're stretching the inner thigh and opening the hip. Stay long and steady like the trunk of a tree in your standing leg. So you don't wanna let that hip stick out to the side. You wanna firm up that leg, lift the kneecap, lift the quadriceps, the front of the thighs, so you have a steady and firm trunk of your tree. So either foot comes to the sole of the foot inside the calf, it actually fits nicely the curve of the calf and the curve of the sole of the foot, or inside your thigh and press firmly into your thigh. Now, you can, if it's available to let go, the traditional tree pose brings the hand into prayer position, the hands into prayer. If you need to hold on, even just with a tip of a finger, notice that you might just need a tip of a finger and not need to grasp. So hold on as lightly as you can. The other hand can make the sound of one hand clapping, which is what they speak about in Zen, the Zen koans, what is the sound of one hand clapping? So see if you can either bring hands in prayer or make the sound of one hand clapping, or if it's available, both hands to the sky. Maybe if you have your foot grounded a little bit, you'll be able to do that. So find the expression of tree that feels good for you. When you're ready to release, come back standing in mountain. We'll come to the other side. And when we practice these balance poses, 
The invitation is to focus your gaze into a spot on the floor a few feet in front of you, maybe six feet in front of you, to anchor your attention. So find your expression, either foot on a block, remembering to try to turn your knee straight out to the, as, as, as best out to the side as you can, rather than pointing forward. So we really enjoy that hip opener as well as balance practice. So come into your expression of tree, calf, thigh, or what I call the sapling, toes on the mat, on the, on the ground, on the floor, and just a tip of a finger. You may find that that's all you need. And either hands in prayer when you're ready or making the sound of one hand clapping, or if it's available, branches to the sky. Maybe you wanna have one side branches reach to the sky. Notice if you're clenching in the jaw or scrunching in the face or furrowing the brow and see if you can bring some softness to the facial muscles. Steady and comfortable, firm in your tree. Tree is also one of the, a wonderful example of that bridge between earth and sky, just like you. And when you're ready to release, coming back to standing, shake out one leg, shake out the other leg. And if you're really clever and you want to try something really uh, interesting, try shaking out both legs at the same time. <laughs> I was just kidding on that one. All right. Come to sit on your chair. And we'll do a little bit more strengthening of the abdominal muscles, the core. So once again, sit with your sit bones planted at the front edge of your chair. Gently grasp the sides of your chair. Roll the shoulders back and down. Feet hip width apart. Knees in line with your hips. Inhale, draw the thigh in toward the belly on the right side. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, left thigh draws in. Exhale, lower down. We're going to flow side to side with breath here, just lifting and lowering. If it doesn't feel available for you to lift as high as I'm lifting, that's okay. You just want to feel, notice how intuitively your core muscles know how to engage in order to support you. And I'll turn sideways so you can see a do and don't. You don't want to be doing this because that you're sometimes the intuitive thing to do is to uh, fold forward to compensate. But if you stay in that steady and comfortable seat with shoulders stacked over hips, that will in, in, invite your abdominal muscles to stay strong and to firm up to support you. We wanna strengthen those muscles. So stay long in the spine and centered. And then the next time you lift the right thigh, inhale, draw it in, exhale, press out straight ahead. See if you can bring that leg uh, foot in line with the hip perpendicular to the body. Inhale, draw that thigh in, exhale, release. Inhale, left thigh draws in, exhale, press away out to the heel, keep the foot flexed, inhale. Draw it in, exhale, release. Flowing side to side, inhale, draw in, exhale, press out. Inhale, draw in, exhale, release. Left side. Flowing with breath. Let your own pace of your own breathing determine the length and pace of the movement. Last time, drawing in, pressing out, drawing in and release. Okay, bounce out the legs. <sighs> I invite you to draw your right thigh 
in toward your belly. And this time, turn the right knee out to the side. We're going to come into figure four. Here, you may want to come back a little bit on your chair so that there's more of your left thigh on the mat that might, uh, on the chair, it might feel a little more stable for you. So this is a strong hip opener and glute stretch. This might be as far as you're comfortable going, and it's okay if this knee wants to stick up. For many people, it does. Just find your own access to this pose. If you find that it's hard to get that figure four, so your leg is, your, your legs are gonna be like this if, if you were standing, you can slide your opposite leg, your left leg out, your foot out a little bit so that it lowers your thigh down a little if you need to. And if it's available, you can press your right hand just gently into your knee inside of your knee to invite that rotation open the hip. This is a juicy pose. Opens the hip, stretches the glutes. Mm. Here's where we get to dance a little bit with the edge, play with that edge. The place where sensation is strong, but not painful. You do not want to push yourself to the point of pain ever. You just want to go to that place where you feel that aliveness where you feel like you want to go, oh, yeah, I feel this. And then you back off on the inhale, and give yourself a little space, and then exhale, meet your edge a little bit more. Now, again, and notice if it feels any different. Like I said, the edge is something malleable. It's cha it changes with every breath. If you want to take it deeper, you can fold forward onto your legs. Some people find it easier to place the blanket here and to fold the torso, either on forearms or just let your torso hang down. For some of you, you might find that you can place a block next to your left foot here and just press into the block for a little support as you fold over. Where is the place where you really feel that juice? Jane Fonda used to talk about going for the burn. Here we want to go for the juice. That place where you feel that, oh yeah, I am alive. And then bringing your hands back to your lap to press yourself up to seated. We'll just take this into a twist. So take your knee that is, in this case, your, your right knee that's out to the side and draw that thigh in toward your belly. Wrap your left hand around your leg so that you bring, if you can, either the lower leg in the crook of the elbow or just hand outside the bent knee. And right hand back behind you, either on the back of the chair or on the seat of the chair, and take it into a seated twist. See how your twist feels now. And releasing the twist, unwind your legs. Notice the difference between your right and left side and we'll take that figure four on the other side. So hug that left thigh in, turn your knee out to the side. And when you do this figure four, you want to make contact above the ankle, not on the ankle or below the ankle, which would sickle the foot. You wanna have your above ankle, so the lower part of your shin make contact with the middle of your thigh. Find your length to give a little press to the inside of your thigh and find that juicy spot. And as I said before, if your knee sticks up, that's fine. Just find your own access to the pose. If you need to slide your right foot forward a little bit to lower it down, you can do that. Maybe holding on to your foot so it doesn't slip. If it would be a nice exploration for you to fold forward, maybe with a blanket there or a block, 
to press into with your hands next to your right foot and just fold over the leg. You can do that. So here you have the opportunity to send the breath to any places where you're noticing tightness, restriction, or strong sensation. So the breath becomes a way to actually massage those tight areas. Where we send our breath and our attention is where prana will flow, life energy. When you're ready to release, press into your legs to come up to center. And we'll take it into that twist. So hug your knee in toward your heart, your thigh in toward your belly. Wrap your right arm around wherever you can hug it in. Let the other hand come back behind you and take it into a seated twist, looking over your left shoulder behind you. Twists are considered to be very good and calming for the nervous system. Some people use the imagery of a kind of wringing out a wet towel, that you're wringing out tension from the nervous system. And when you're ready, you can release the twist, unwind your legs. And just come to a comfortable seated position in your chair, finding again your yogic seat. Shoulders back and down, heart gently spread open, lengthening up through the crown of your head, rooting down through the tail. Once again, finding your own heart center as the bridge between earth and sky. Turn the palms up on the lap. So the backs of the hands rest on your thighs. So we come into that gesture of receptivity. Let the eyes close. And through this, for this last few moments of our practice, this is like a seated Shavasana. Shavasana is the corpse pose, the pose of just coming into stillness and letting go of any doing. It's a practice of simply receiving all of the prana that you've opened up to with every breath, with every movement, and just letting it come streaming in to all of the nooks and crannies of your being, to every energy meridian, to every muscle, to every cell, even your bones lighting up with that life force. And here you can even let go of any control of the breath and just allow the breathing to find its own natural rhythm. Just let the breath come to you. Peace to all, love to all, light to all, joy to all. Grace to all 
peace to all, love to all, light to all, joy to all, health to all, wealth to all, strength to all, grace to all. I invite you now to bring the palms of the hands together in prayer position. We practice yoga not just for our own well-being, but to allow that positive energy to radiate out from within us, to touch those in our communities, families, workplaces. So we be, we become force of healing in the world. So I invite you now to think of a being, someone you know in your life, or maybe a place in the world where you'd like to send that health and strength and grace and wellness. I'm thinking of the people in India right now who are really suffering from COVID. So whoever it is, wherever it is that you'd like to send that well-being to, bring that into your mind and heart. Hold them in your mind's eye and in your heart. Peace to all, love to all, light to all, joy to all. Health to all, wealth to all, strength to all, grace to all. And those of you who wish to can join me in closing our practice with the sound of Om. Taking a deep breath in, filling all the way up into the chest, exhaling together with the sound of Om. with the salutation namaste which means the divinity in me sees and bows to the divinity in you namaste